acute kidney injury is my second topic for today and we will proceed with the definition of etiopathogenesis. One thing I want to say is that acute kidney injury is a newer term used for acute renal failure. Acute renal failure used to be used earlier but now on in pediatrics there is no term called acute renal failure because essentially the term renal failure means there is no returning of that function. So here acute kidney injury and chronic kidney disease are the terms used in the acute and chronic involvement of the kidney. We do not use acute renal failure and chronic renal failure in children anymore. It is acute kidney injury or AKI and chronic kidney disease or CKD. So coming to the introduction and classification, acute kidney injury is a state of acute renal insufficiency. It is defined as a condition where there is an acute injury to the kidney hampering its function in maintaining the fluid and electrolyte balance in the body. The classification is based upon the etiology and the etiology is of three main broad classifications. You can have the pre-renal type of AKI, intrinsic renal type of AKI and the post-renal type of AKI. So first we will begin with the pre-renal type of AKI. The pre-renal type of AKI is the acute kidney injury has resulted because of a systemic cause which is outside the kidney like diarrhea or acute gastroenteritis causing dehydration and then causing renal insufficiency and then causing acute kidney injury. Sepsis wherein because of sepsis the toxins also affect the kidney and this dehydration and that causes acute kidney injury. Shock causing renal hypoperfusion. When I say shock it could be hemorrhagic shock, hypovolemic shock congestive cardiac failure and poor renal perfusion, cardiogenic shock, all of this can produce pre-renal type of acute kidney injury. Then the intrinsic type of acute kidney injury or the intrinsic renal type of AKI. Here the causes are primarily affecting the kidney per se. Here you can have glomerular inflammation or tubular inflammation. So first glomerular inflammation, here classical is post streptococcal glomerular nephritis. Either it can be because of post streptococcal, because of systemic lupus erythematosus or pediatric HIV. But the pathology is glomerular inflammation. Then as the child we had here hemolytic uremic syndrome producing intrinsic AKI. I have seen snake bite especially viper bites producing acute kidney injury in children requiring dialysis till their renal function recovers. Malignancies with tumor lysis syndrome especially when you have a high tumor burden. And when you give chemotherapy, this tumor burden starts lysing and this massive lysis of the tumor cells and that causes acute kidney injury. Drugs and toxins. When I say drugs and toxins, I mean drugs. Very common antibiotic is vancomycin and nephrotoxic drugs, even furosemide, aminoglycosides, all of them are nephrotoxin. When I say toxins, I mean this kind of alternative medicines which I had explained earlier, where herbal preparations made at home for the children's well-being using commonly available roots and barks, they may have high concentration of these heavy metals. Sometimes high concentrations of heavy metals can cause nephrotic syndrome, secondary type of nephrotic syndrome. Sometimes chronic ingestion of these heavy metals can also cause acute kidney injury. The last cause of intrinsic type of acute kidney injury is the tubular interstitial nephritis with its various causes of tubular interstitial nephritis. And the third umbrella term is the post renal type of acute kidney injury. Here the causes are outside the kidney but down in the urinary tract from the ureter, pelvis, ureter, urinary bladder and urethra. They are the post renal type of acute kidney injury. Here you have obstructive uropathies for example as caused by the posterior urethral valve, pelvic ureteric junction obstruction vesicoureteric junction obstruction, all of it cause obstructive uropathy and this reverse back pressure affects the kidney producing acute kidney injury. Urolithiasis or stones, neurogenic bladder, this here also there is massively distended bladder with urine retention and this causes reverse back pressure as seen in spinal dysraphism or spinal tumors. The neurogenic bladder retains urine and because of the urinary retention, the back pressure will affect the functioning of the kidney producing acute kidney injury. Now coming to the pathogenesis. There are based upon the etiologies, there are three main pathogenetic mechanisms. 
first the prerenal that is the reduced blood supply to the kidney. This is the first cause because there the blood supply was reduced in prerenal causes. Second is the in intrinsic damage to the kidney. And third is the reverse back pressure changes which causes damage to the glomerular or the tubular interstitial apparatus of the kidney. Now what happens when you have this damage either because of reduced blood supply or intrinsic damage to kidney or because of a block or reverse back pressure damage to kidney what happens? You have impairment of the filtration barrier and the resorptive mechanisms are damaged in the kidney and when this happens you will have fall in the glomerular filtration rate. And when that happens, you will have clinically evident azotemia. Azotemia means elevated blood urea nitrogen and serum creatinine and eventually acidosis. So, this is the pathogenesis of acute kidney injury in children. Coming to the clinical features and management, history of the etiology is very important because we have learned prerenal, intrinsic renal and postrenal type of etiological and classification. So, we should know whether there are any prerenal causes whether there was any intrinsic renal cause or whether there is any post renal cause. Why is that? Now, if you look at the causes carefully, pre-renal causes are much more easier to treat than the intrinsic renal causes. Treatment of the pre-renal causes upfront and early causes rapid return of renal function as compared to the intrinsic renal damage. When you have intrinsic renal damage, always the prognosis has to be a little guarded and we have to very carefully watch for the extent of damage. In many cases, the extent of damage is not severe and the kidney function does come back. In post renal causes, there is no option of medical management. Most of those causes are usually surgical causes or causes which require drainage of bladder. Hence, it is very important to identify the etiology so that we can identify the modality of treatment appropriately. Now, what are the clinical features of acute kidney injury despite the cause? If you have taken history of etiology, how do you know this etiology has produced acute kidney injury? There will be vomiting because of azotemia, reduced urine output producing either oliguria or anuria. You will have fluid retention evidence by edema and periorbital puffiness. In smaller infants, azotemia is evidenced by vomiting, irritability, altered sensorium along with oliguria or anuria. This is how this baby had presented. Features of hypertension can be present where you have headache as well as altered sensorium you can have because of hypertension as consequent to acute kidney injury. And once the child has gone to acidosis, you can have deep sighing breaths, especially in very, very sick children with acute kidney injury. So, how do you investigate a child with acute kidney injury? First, you will do a complete hemogram. In the complete hemogram, hemoglobin may be low especially like in this child who has hemolysis and hemolytic uremic syndrome, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia will be there. So, you may have low hemoglobin. Total count can be elevated, especially in sepsis, dehydration, shock, total count will be elevated, glomerular nephritis, in tubular interstitial nephritis, secondary to infection. In all those cases, total count will be elevated. Platelet may be low or may be normal. Now, it may be normal in conditions like dehydration, or conditions like shock, it may be low when we are considering sepsis, infections or inflammatory causes, hemolytic uremic syndrome always has thrombocytopenia. So, in those cases, you will have thrombocytopenia. Renal function test, these are diagnostic. Renal function tests will show elevated blood urea nitrogen, elevated serum creatinine as well as elevated uric acid levels. Serum electrolytes should be done because the kidney, one of the main function is electrolyte balance. So, serum electrolytes will show hyponatremia, they can show hyperkalemia, acidosis evidenced by low bicarbonate and hypocalcemia can be seen. Renal imaging, especially first primarily mode is ultrasound abdomen that will show parenchymal changes with loss of corticomedullary differentiation in intrinsic acute kidney injury. You may have features suggestive of obstruction in obstructive neuropathies. That is, you may be able to identify the pelvioretric junction uh, obstruction, urolithiasis, posterior urethral valve, all that can be identified by ultrasound imaging or by imaging with ultrasound using contrast. You will do an arterial blood gas level, especially in sick children, to estimate the degree of acidosis and how sick the child is. 
if a child with acute kidney injury is having a very low arterial ph all these are poor prognostic markers for that child urine routine when we do usually to do this urine routine itself is very difficult which is why i have put this urine routine lower down on my list urine routine in children with acute kidney injury they come with anuria and oliguria so by the time they are able to stabilize the child and even collect that urine sample itself is challenging so urine routine if ever you collect you may send it for urine routine and get hematuria proteinuria you may have uh, casts in the urine which can be rbc casts or granular casts you should do a urine specific gravity and urinary electrolytes to differentiate between renal and prerenal causes urine specific gravity and urinary electrolytes will essentially be normal when it is a prerenal cause and will be altered when it is an intrinsic renal cause and finally we have to investigate for the etiology we will do blood cultures initially when we are suspecting sepsis you will do an ana profile if you are suspecting glomerulonephritis secondary to collagen vascular diseases like sle serum c3 c4 if you are suspecting collagen vascular diseases or glomerulonephritis even post streptococcal glomerulonephritis and aso also for the same bone marrow aspiration if your leukemia and tumor lysis is causing this uh, aki tumor biopsy if ever you have solid tumors which are causing acute kidney injury so in this manner first you will identify the cause of the renal pathology then why this child has got renal injury either it's a prerenal intrinsic renal or post renal cause and then manage